these clothes be good enough to drink in, so be these shoes too. As they be not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. That popping and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who, Sir Andrew Aguchi? Aye, he. He's as tall a man as any in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, and half but a year in all those ducats. He's a great fool and a prodigal. Ah, fie that you say so. He plays the ball, the gamboys, and speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and hath all the good qualities of nature. Oh, he hath indeed. Almost natural. But besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreller. And but that he hath the gift of the coward to allay the gust he hath been quarrelled in, it is thought amongst the prudent he would quickly have the gift of the grave. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of them. Who are they? They add, moreover, he's drunk nightly, in your company. By drinking health to my niece. I'll drink to her as long as there's a passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel who'll not drink to my niece till his brains turn over the toe like a parish top. Oh, what wench, Castilian of Olgo, for here comes Sir Andrew Agafay. Sir Toby Bell. Sweet Sir Andrew. How now, Sir Toby Bell. Bless you, fair shrew. You too, sir. A cost, sir, under a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. A cost is to front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Very well, gentlemen. And thou let part so, Sir Andrew, would that might never draw sword again. And you part so, mistress, I would... Never draw sword again. I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have you not by the hand. Marry, but you shall have, and here is my hand. Now, sir, thought is free, I pray you. Bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. <laughs> Wherefore, sweetheart, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. I think so. I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? It's dry, sir. Are you full of dry jests? Aye, sir. I have them at my finger's ends. Marry, sir. Now I let go your hand, I'm barren. Oh, if thou luck's a cup of canary, when did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. And I thought that, I'd forswear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? <laughs> do or not do? I would I had bestowed that time in the tongues that I have in dancing, fencing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Faith, I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. Or, if she be, it's four to one she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. She'll not, not match above her degree in estate, years, nor wit. I have heard her swear it, but there's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes altogether. Are thou good at these kickshaws this night? As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be, under the degree of my betters. And yet, I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellence in a Gelliard night? Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Ah, wherefore are these things hit? Wherefore have these clip things a curtain before them? Are they likely to take dust like Mistress Cole's picture? Why does that not go to church in a galliard and come home in a caranto? 
I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg it was formed under the star of Galio. Ah, it is strong, and it does it different well in a flame-coloured stock. <laughs> shall we set about some revels? Oh, what shall we do else? Shall we not fall under Taurus? Taurus? That's sides and heart. No, sir, it's legs and thighs. Have you seen it, Caper? Ha ha ha! Excellent!
give me leave to prove the pull. Can you do it? Dexteriously, good Madonna. Thank you. Good Madonna. My mourn is that. Good fool for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What thing does your fool Malvolio? Is she not meant? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. <laughs> I saw her put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brains than a stone. Look you now, she's out of her guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to her, she's gagged. <laughs> I protest. I take these wise men who crow so at these set kind of fools, no better than fool sailors. You are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. Madam, there is a debate for young gentlemen now. Much desires to speak with you. From the Count of Sino, is it? I know not, Madam, but... It's a fair young man and well attended. Well, my people hold him in delay. Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madman. Fie on him. But go you, Balvo. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What do you want to dismiss it? Now you see, mistress, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Well, thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest should be a fool. It's <laughs> dull a joke, crap with brains. For here comes one of thy kin has a most weak diamata. By mine honour, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? A gentleman here. A plague, a plague of these pickled herrings. Oh, pan out, sir. Good, Sir Toby. Cousin. Cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lectury? I defy lectury! There's one at the gates. I marry. What is he? Oh, let him be the devil and he will, I care not. Give me faith, so I saw one. Madam, yon young gentleman swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have full knowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He is fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post, and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What a man is he? Why, a man manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? What personage and years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. As a squash is before tis a peas pot, or a godling when tis almost an apple, and tis with him <laughs> in standing water between boy and man. He is very well favoured and speaks very shrewishly. <laughs> One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman? <laughs> my lady calls. Bring me my veil. Come, throw it on my face. <laughs> well, once more heels. The Honourable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. You're well. Most radiant, exquisite and unmatchable beauty. <laughs> I pray you tell me if you be the Lady of the House, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains upon it. <coughs> Whence came you, sir? I say little more than I studied, and that question's out of my heart. Good 
Judge Salon, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? Oh, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I am not what I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certainly you are she you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech and your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important, Timothy. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. Tis the more like to be feigned. I pray you, keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. Will you hoist sail, sir? Be light your way. No good swabber. I am here to call a little more. Some mollification for your giant sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of, it, courtesy of it is so fearful. It speaks your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full as peace and man. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that has appeared in me I have learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as made upon. To your ears, divinity, others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this definitively. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom. In what chapter of his bosom? Do you answer by the method in the first of his heart? No! I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done. If God did all. Twill endure wind and weather. <laughs> Tis beauty truly blended, whose red and white sweets nature's own cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my views. It shall be inventory with every particle and utensil labelled to my will as item, two lips in different red. Item, two brown eyes with lips of them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. You send hither to praise me. I see what you are. You are too proud. <laughs> Though if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be what recompense, so you were crowned the non parel of beauty. How does he love me? With adoration's fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, gracious person, but yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. I did love you in my master's flame. With such suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. Why, would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of condemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Follow your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out. Olivia. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well, I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. 
unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. I am no thief, no spenders. Keep your her. My master, not myself, black child. Farewell, sir. What is your parentage? Above my state, but my, 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 my state as well. I am a gentleman. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, thy actions and spirit do give thee by full blazon. Not so far, soft, soft, unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. <laughs> we think I feel this youth's perfection with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep, creep in, in mine eyes. Well, let it be. How now, Malvolio? Hear, madam, that your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up in hopes. I am not for him. But if that youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio! Madam, I will! I do I know not what, but fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force, ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be. Be this so. Will you stay no longer? Nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. I shall crave of your leave that I may bear my evils alone. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No sooth, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian which I called Rodrigo. My father is that Sebastian of Messaline, who I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. <coughs> Had the heavens been pleased, would we so have ended? But you, sir, you altered all of that, for some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister was my sister drowned. Last the day, a lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was by many accounted beautiful. And though I could not with such estimable wonder over far believe that, thus far I will boldly publish her. She had a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, in salt water, and yet I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Give me the trouble, Antonia. If you will not murder me for my love, then let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have already done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. My bosom is full of and yet, I am so near the manners of my mother that on the least occasion more mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the Count of Venus. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies at Orsino's court, else will I very shortly see thee there. what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. <laughs> Were you not enough with the Countess Olivia? Even now, miss, on a moderate pace I have since arrived with hither. She returns this ring to you. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away with you. 
She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance. She'll none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, <laughs> sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and it is her will it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies, in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. <laughs> I left no ring with her. What means this lady? She forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much we thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. Cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. Why he sent her not. I am the man. If it be so, as tis, poor lady, she would better love a dream. How will this fetch? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day. What thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Will time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me, one cry. Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be bed after midnight, it's to be up for time. And didn't see you, Sir Jerry, thou know. Nay, by my troth, I know not. But I know. To be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight is then to go to bed, then it's early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say. But I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar. Therefore let us eat and drink. I am, I say, do wine. Here comes the fool, if they. How now, my heart? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, Master. Now let's have a catch. By my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. And I had rather than forty shillings, I had such a leg. And so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. In sooth. Thou wast in very gracious fooling last night, when thou spokest of Higrogrometus, of the Vapians passing the equinoctial of Cubus. T'was very good, if I. I sent thee sixpence for thy leave, hadst it? Oh, I did, in Pentecost. Thy gratuity for Malvolio's nose is no wit stop. <laughs> My lady has a white hand. And the myrmidons are no bottle-air halberds. Excellent! <laughs> Why, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now, a song. Come, there are six for me. Let's have a song. And there is a test reel of me, too. If Would one you night have a love song or a song of good life? A love song. A love song. I, I, I care not for good life.
mellifluous voice as I am true knight. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious, of faith. To hear by the nose it is dulcet in contagion. Shall we not make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night town in a cat that will draw three souls from one weaver? Shall we do that? And you love me, let's do it. I am dog at a catch. By the lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. <laughs> Most certain. Let our catch be thou knave. Hold thy peace. Thou knave, knight, I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave. Night. Tis not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool. It begins, hold thy peace. Oh, I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> That's good, Defay. Come, begin. Roll Lisa, mother, out the barrel. Lisa, mother, barrel. Let's have Lisa, a barrel Lisa, of fun. Roll, roll out. out. If my lady had not called up her steward Malvolio and bid her turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Cathian. We are politicians. Malvolio's a peg of Ramsay. Three merry fellows be we. Am I not Canton Wavius? Am I not of her blood? Oh, Tilly Valley, lady. There dwelt a man in Babylon. <laughs> lady, lady. Beshrew me, the night is in admirable calling. Aye, he does well enough, if he be disposed. And so do I, too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. Oh, the 12th day of oh, no, December! No, 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 my masters! Are you mad or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an alehouse out of my lady's house that you squeak out your coziest catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect for place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, ma madam, in our catches. Snack up. <laughs> Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bad me tell you, though she harbours you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanours, you are welcome in the house. If not, and it please you to take your leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Art thou any more than a steward? Does thou think because thou art virtuous there shall be no more cakes than ale? Oh, yes, by Saint Anne. And ginger shall be hot in the mouth too. Thou art in the right. Go, madam, rub your chain with crumbs. A soup of wine, Mariah. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favour at anything more than content, you would not give means for this uncivil woman. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears! T'were as good a deed as to drink when man's are hungry, to challenge her the fields, and then to break promise with her and make a fool of her. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Count was tonight with my lady, she is much out of quiet. For Madame Malvolio, let me alone with her. I cannot gull her into a neighbourhood and make her a common recreation. Do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us. Tell us something of her. Marry, sir, sometimes she is a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat her like a dog. What, for being a Puritan? By exquisite reason, dear knight. I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. The devil, a Puritan that she is, or anything constantly time pleaser, an affectioned ass that comes state without book and utters it by great swathes the best persuaded of herself so crammed as she thinks with excellencies, it's on her grounds of faith that all that look on her love her. <laughs> and on this vice in her will my revenge find notable cause to work. What will that do? I will drop in her way some obscure epistles of love, wherein 
by the colour of her beard, <laughs> the shape of her leg, the manner of her gait, the expression of her eye, forehead and complexion. She shall find herself most feelingly personated. I can write very much like my lady, your niece, on a forgotten matter. We can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose too. She shall think by the letters that thou shalt drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with her. My purpose is indeed a horse of that colour. And your horse now would make her an ass. As I doubt not. <laughs> oh, it will be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with her. I will plant you two and let the fool make a third where she shall discover the letter. Observe her construction of it. But tonight, to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Oh, good night, Penthesilea. Before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle, true bred, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. <laughs> Come, night. Let's go to bed. Oh, me for send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Send for money, night. If I have her not in the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, let's go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, night. Come, night. Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario. But that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, we thought it did relieve my passions much. More so than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and guinea pace times. Come, but one verse. Who was it? Jessie. Jessie, my lord. Of course, the lady that is from such a nice That house. Seek her out. Come, hither boy. If ever thou shalt love in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are. Unstayed and skittish in all motions else save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How didst thou like that song? It gave a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eyes has sought favour on something that it loves, has it not, boy? A little, by your favour. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion? She's not worth thee then. What years, if they? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him. So sways she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and infirm, more longings wavering sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it's well, my lord. So let thy young, thy love, be younger than oneself, or thine affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed, doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Ah, lady! That song we heard last night. Are you ready, sir? I prithee sing. Bye. 
for thy pains. No pains, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure, then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid. One time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy god protects thee. And the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta. For thy mind is a very open. I would have men of such constancy put to see that their business may be everything and their intent everywhere. For that's it that makes a good voyage out of nothing. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to one same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantities of dirty lands, but is that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in, attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir, I cannot so be answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a greater pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her? You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sigh can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love does hold my heart. No woman's heart is so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Whereas mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. I would I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith they are as true as heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be... Perhaps were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? Blank, my lord. She never told her love. But let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her dismasked cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. Still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. And died your sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Oh. Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste, give her this jewel. Tell her my love will give no place, bide no delay. Come thy way, Sonia Fabian. Would thou not be glad to see the niggly rasping sheep biter come by some notable shame? I'll exult, man. You know she brought me out of bay with my lady about a bear baiting you. To anger her, we shall have the bear again, and we shall fool her black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not. It is pity of our lives. Ah, oh, here comes the little villain. How now, my metal of India? Get you all through behind the box street. Marboni is coming down this walk. She has been yonder in the sun, practicing behaviour to her own shadow this half hour. <laughs> Lie thou there! For here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy, it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think of it? Here's an overweening rogue. Oh, Pete's contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of her. How she jets under her advanced fleet. Slight, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. 
to be Countess Malvolio. Oh, wrong! Pistol her! Pistol her! <laughs> peace, peace! There is example of it. The lady of the Strachey married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fie on her! Jezebel! Now she's been seen. Look how imagination blows her. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone boat to hit her in the eye! Calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I had left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! <laughs> peace, peace! And then to have the humour of state and after a demure travail of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to call for my kinsman. Bolts, shackles! Peace, peace, now, now, now! Seven of my men, with an obedient start, make up for him. I frown the while at the chance. Find my watch, or play with my son, rich jewel. Toby approaches and curtsies there to me. Shall this woman live? Oh, though a sign be drawn from us the curse, nay, peace! I extend my hand to him thus quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Oh, well, Toby, take your blur the lips, then. <laughs> Saying to him, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me upon your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Oscar! Nay, patience, or we break the sinews of our blood. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. <laughs> One, <laughs> Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, but many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Well, now is the woodcock near the gin. Oh, peace and the spirit of humour's intimate reading aloud to her. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very seas, her ewes and her teas. And thus makes she her great peas. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her seas, her ewes, and her teas. <laughs> Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. By my life wax soft. And the impression, her lucrece with which she uses to see. It is my lady. To whom should this be? This wins her liver and all. <laughs> Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. Oh, the number's altered. No man must know. This should be the Malvolio. Marry, hang me, Brock. I may command where I adore, but science, like a Lucrece knife with bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. M O A I doth sway my life. A fussy and rid of Excellent wench, say I. M O A I doth sway my life. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, what dish of poison has she served her? And with what wing the Staniel checks at it? <laughs> I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. She is my lady, I serve her. This is evident to any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in this. But the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? M O A I. Oh, I make her lashes now to call Oh, Sultan may cry out upon it, though it be as rank as a fox. M. Malvolio! M! For that begins my name! And did I not say she should work it out? The cur is excellent at fox. M! But then there is no consonancy in the sequel. A should follow, but O does. Oh, and O shall end, I hope. Aye, I'll culture her and make a cry, O. <laughs> and then I comes behind. Aye, if you had more than I behind you, you would see more detraction at your heels than fortune before you. This simulation is not as the former. And yet, to crush it a little, it would bow to me. Every one of those letters is in my name. Ooh, so
soft, ear follows prose. If this falls into thy hand, rivel. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> Loved and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember, go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a servant still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she who would alter services with thee. Fortunate, unhappy. Daylight and champagne discover not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point device, the very woman. I do not now fool myself to let imagination change me. For every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. <laughs> she, she did commend my yellow stockings and late. She did praise my leg for being cross guarded. And in this, she manifests herself to my love and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars. I'm I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting on. Praise, there is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainst my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smile becomes thee well, therefore in my presence still smile, my sweet, I pretty. <laughs> Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. <laughs> I could marry the wench for this device. Oh, so could I, too. And ask no other dare with her but such another jest. Nor I, neither. Oh, tis our noble goal catcher. Will thou set thy foot on my neck? Or mine, either. Shall I ply my freedom at trade trip and become thy bond slave? If faith or I, either. Why, that's put her in such a dream that when the image of it leaves her, she must run mad! Nay, but say true, does it work upon her? Like aqua vitae with a midwife. You will see the fruits of the sport, then mark her first approach before my lady. She will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a colour she abhors. <laughs> and cross garted a fashion she detests, and she will smile upon her, which will now be un so unsuitable to her disposition, <laughs> being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn her into a notable contempt. See it, follow me. For the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of a witch. I'll make one too. Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. And fools are as like husbands as pilchards are to herrings. The husband, the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I 
I saw thee late at the council seaman. Ornery, sir, doth walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, sir, uh, but I should as oft be with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and now pass upon thee. I'll no more with thee. Hold. There's expenses. Place your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir. To win, sir. I will ask you again. Ah, oh, but we are prevented. Most excellent accomplished lady, the heavens rain odours on you. That youth's a rare courtier. Rain odours. Well. <laughs> my matter hath no voice. Your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Pregnant odours vouchsafed. I'll get them all free, <laughs> all ready. <laughs> Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. What is your name? Cesario is your pretty your servant's name, their princess. My sir. Your servant to the count will see no youth, and he is yours. And his must needs be yours. Your servant, servant is your servant, man. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me. I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. By your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, give me leave to see. I did send after the last enchantment you did here, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit and force that on you in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honour at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart might think? To one of your receiving, enough is shown. Cyprus, not a bosom hides my heart, so let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not agrees, for tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why then? Methinks it is time to smile again. Oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should fall prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. The clock upbraids me with a waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth. I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth has come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then, west of home. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. Feel nothing to my lord by me? Say, I prithee. Tell me what thou thinkest of me, that you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. 
and think you right, I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. The murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidenhood, honour, truth, and everything, I love thee so that more for all thy pride, nor reason, nor wit can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reason from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason better. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By my innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none, shall be mistress of it save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Never again will I my master's tears to you before. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move that heart, which now falls to life and love. No, faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thou no. reason, dear Venom, give thou reason. You must needs yield your reasons, Andrew. Marry, I saw your niece do more favours to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me, I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. But this was a great argument of love in her towards you, Sir Andrew. Slight. Will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate on the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. She did show the youth favour in your sight to exasperate. To awaken your dormouse valour, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have a cluster done, and with excellent jest, fire in you from the mint should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for in you and was false. The double guiltless opportunity you have let time wash off, and so you have sailed into the north of Our Lady's opinion. Well, you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard unless you redeem it by laudable attempt of valour or policy. And be anyway, it must be with valour, for policy I hate. I had as lief be a brownist as a politician. Then build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valour. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places, my niece will take note. And assure thyself there is no greater love broker in the world can more prevail in man's accommodation with women than report of valour. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, it's not be eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. About it. Let there be gall in thy ink. Although thou write with a goose pen, no matter. About it. Uh, where shall I find you? We'll see thee at the cubicle. Oh. Go. This is a dear mannequin to use it, Toby, is it not? I've been dear to him, lad, some 2,000 strong or so. We'll have a rare note from him, but you'll not deliver it. Never trust me, then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hold them together. <laughs> ah, look where the youngest friend of mine comes. Oh, I'm now desirous to spleen and will laugh yourselves into stitches. Follow me. Yon girl, Malvolio, is turned heathen. A very renegado, for there can be no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. She's in yellow stocking! <laughs> <laughs> and cross garters! Almost villainously, like a peasant that keeps a school in the church. She does follow every point of the letter I did drop to betray her. She does smile her face into more lines than there is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. <laughs> I know my lady will strike her, and if she do, she'll smile and take it for a great favour. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, take us, take us where she is. I would not by my will have followed you, but seeing as you seem to make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire more sharp for violent steel did spur me forth, and not all love to see you so much as might have drawn me to a longer voyage, but jealousy, what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which 
After a stranger, and guided and unfriended, often proved rough and inhospitable, my willing gloves are rather by these arguments of fear set forth in your dispute. Like my kind Antonio, I can make no other answer but thanks and thanks and ever thanks, and oft good turns are shuffled off with such an uncurrent behaviour. Were my worth as is my conscience fair, you should find better dealing. Well, what's to do? Shall we go and see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir, best first go to your lodging. But I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, uh, let us satisfy our eyes on the memorials and things of fame to renown this city. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the county's galleys, I did some service. Such note indeed that were I tame here, it would scarce be answered. Like you slew a great number of people. The offence was not of such a bloody nature, albeit the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody arguments. It might have been answered since in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which if I be lapsed in this place I shall pay dear. Well then, do not walk too open. <laughs> it does not fit me. Halter. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the Elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why are your purse? Happy or I may light upon some toy that you have desired to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the Elephant. I do remember. I have sent for him. He said, well, come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? The youth is more, more of bought than beg or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? She is sad and civil and suits well for a servant of my fortune. Where is Malvolio? She's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. For sure she's possessed, madam. Why, what's the matter? Does she rave? No, madam. She does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about it. She, she, <laughs> for sure the woman is tainted in her wits. <laughs> Go send her hither. I'm as mad as she, if sad and merry madness seems to be. How now, my lady? Sweet lady. Ho ho. I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady. <laughs> I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. Why? Right. How dost thou, woman? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to her, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. <laughs> wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? <laughs> to bed, sweetheart, I, and I'll come to thee. God comfort thee! Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? <coughs> yes, at your request, nightingales answer doors. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, doors well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon Heaven them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stocking. Thy yellow stocking. And <laughs> wish to see thee cross guarded. Cross guarded. Go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. <coughs> Madam, the young gentleman of the Count Rossino has returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Maria, let this lady be looked to. Bless my cousin Toby. Let some of my people have a special care of her. I would not have her miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, oh, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him that I may appear stubborn with him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Cast 
thy humble slough, says she, be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state, put thyself into the trick of singularity. And then sets forth the manner how, with a sad face, a reverent gait, a slow tongue, in the habit of some sir of note, and so forth. I have limed her. I, and when she went away, let this lady be looked to, not Malvolio or after my degree, but lady. Everything adheres together so that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance, what can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Joe nor I is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is she in the name of sanctity of all the devil of hell be drawn in little, and leisure himself as Esther, yet I'll speak to her. Here she is, here she is. How is it with you, madam? How is it with you, lady? Go off. I discard you. Go off, leave me to my privates. No, how hollow the fiend speaks within her. Didn't I tell you? Sir Toby, my lady prays you to have a care of her. But she now. Go to, go to, peace, peace. You must deal gently with her. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What woman defy the devil? Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Oh, what you say? <gasps> you! And you speak ill of the devil? How she takes it to heart? I pray God she not be bewitched. Carry her water to the wise woman. Marry, it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose her for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Pretty peace, this is not the way. Do you not see you move her? Let me alone with her. No way but gentleness. Gently, gently. The fiend is rough, but will not be rough. How now, my bullcock, how dost thou chuck? Sir! Aye, Biddy, come with me. What woman is not for gravity to play at cherry pit with Satan? Hang him, foul collier! Get her to say her prayers, Sir Toby, get her to pray! My prayers, minx? No, I warrant you, she will not hear of godliness. Go, hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall no more hear of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it possible? Oh, if you were played upon a stage, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. A very genius has taken the infection to the vice man. Nay, pursue her now, lest the device of air and fate. We shall drive her to madness. The house will be the quieter. Come, we'll have her in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that she's mad. We will carry it through for our pleasure and her penance till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to take mercy on her, at which time we will bring the device to the bar and crown at thee for a finder of mad women. Oh, but see, but see. More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. It's so saucy. I is. I'll warrant him. Do but read. Do it. Youth, whatever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will give thee no reason for it. A good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady of Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. But thou liest in thy throat. A that is not the matter I challenge thee for. A brief note, and to exceedingly good sense. Less. <coughs> I will lay thee going home, wherever it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou killst me like a rogue and a villain. And still thou keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is greater. Therefore look to thyself. Thou friend. As thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Sir Andrew Agachick. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. Oh, you may have very fit occasion for it. He's now in some commerce with my lady, and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout him at the corner of the orchard like a bomb bailey. 
And as soon as thou seest him, draw. And as thou draw, swear horrible. For it comes to pass that a terrible oath, with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off, gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Away! Nay, let me alone for swearing. <laughs> oh, now will I not deliver his letter. For the behaviour of the young gentleman makes him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter being so excellently ignorant will breathe no terror in the youth. He will find it comes from a clodpole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth, set upon Agucheek a note of report of valour, and drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will receive it, in a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so frighten them both that they will kill each other by the look like cockatrices. <laughs> oh, here he comes with your niece. Give way till he take leave, and presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and have laid mine honour too uncharry on it. There is something in me that reproves my fault. But such a potent headstrong fool it is that it but mocks recruit. That the same havior that your passion bears goes on my master's streets. Here, wear this jewel for me, with my picture. If you use it not, it hath no tongue to vex. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. Should you ask of me that I'll deny, then honour save me upon asking give. Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honour may I give to him that which I've already given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. And fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. Thou defence thou hast be take thou to it. Of what nature the wrongs thou hast done him I know not. But thine interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard's end. Dismount thy tuck, be here in thy preparation, for thy opponent is quick, skilful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I'm sure no man have any quarrel for me. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your guard, or your osset hath within him. What use, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man withal? I pray you, what is he? He is knight, dubbed with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration, but he's a devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three, and his incensement at this moment is so implacable that such pangs of satisfaction can be none but by death or sepulchre. Hobdob is his word, give it or take it. Oh, I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I, I have heard of some men that put quarrels purposely on to others to taste their valour. Be like this is a man of that. His indignation derives from a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. Back to the house you shall not go, unless you undertake with as much safety as you might answer him. Therefore, on or strip your sword stark naked, for medal you must, that certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me courteous office, as to know of the knight what my offence to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so, Signor Fabian, stay by this gentleman till I return. Pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? Only that the knight is incensed against you, even to a moral arbitrament, nothing of the circumstances more. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to read him of his form, as you will find in the proof of his valour. Indeed, he is the most skilful, bloody, and deadly opposite you could have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I would much rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows of my mettle. My man, he's a very devil. I've never seen such a parade. Then a pass with him, rape your scabbard and all. And he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it's inevitable. And the answer, he pays you as surely as you put your feet hit the ground they step on. They say it's been fenced of the soffy. Pox on it! I'll not meddle with him! Aye, but he will not now be pacified! Fabian should scarce hold him yonder. 
plague on it. And I thought he had been valiant and so cunning in fence. I'd have seen him damned ere I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll uh, give him my horse, Grey Capulet. I'll make the motion. Now stand here, make a good show on it. This will end without the perdition of souls. Marry, I'll ride the horse as well as I ride you. He is as horribly conceited of him and pants in his tail as if there's a bear in his heels. I have his horse to take up the challenge. I'll persuade him to use the devil. <laughs> Come, sir, there's no remedy. He will fight with you for oath's sake. Marry, he has better thought of himself as his quarrel, now finds it scarcely worth talking of. Therefore, draw her for the supportance of a fair Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give way if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. This gentleman will, for his honour's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot bide it you well, I will avoid it. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman, a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, to it. Pray God he keep his own. I do assure you, tis against my will. Pull up your sword! If this young gentleman has done offence, I take the fault of it on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. <laughs> you, so why? What are you? One, sir, that for his love dare yet do more than you've heard him brag to you, he will. No, if you be an undertaker, I'm for you. As the toe behold, here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. Uh, pray you, sir, put up your sword, if you please. Marry will I, sir, and for that I promised you, I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily. He reigns very well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. Did you mistake me, sir? No, sir, not one jot. I know your favour well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you. But there's no remedy, I shall answer it. What will you do now? My necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. It grieves me so much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away! I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the kindness that you have shown me, and part being prompted by your present troubles, out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Paul, there's half my money. What? Will you deny me now? It's possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion. Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you for those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none. Nor I know you by voice or any feature. I hate ingratitude worn a man than lying vainness, bubbling drunkenness, or any taint of vice with strong corruption and habits of the Heavens themselves. Come, sir, I pray you then go. Let me speak a little. This young man that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love to his image, which me thought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to us? Come, sir, away! Oh, how vile and idle proves this God! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature, shame! In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous evils are empty trunks are flourished by the devil. God, a man grows mad. Come away. Lead me on. Me thinks that his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. If it prove true, if I, dear brother, be now taken for you, he named Sebastian. I, my brother, know, yet living in my glass. Oh, if it prove. Tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. Very dishonest poultry boy, more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty lies in leaving his friends here in necessity and denying him. And as for his cowardship, ask baby. A coward, a devout coward, religious with it. Slid, I'll after him again and beat him. Cut him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Oh, come, let's see the event. I will lay any money, it will be nothing yet.